David Hanko. Let's uh, let's give you some of his comments, mate, since we're talking about that one. So, David Hanko, on potentially moving to Liverpool, this is what he had to say. I was in contact with Slot, but he immediately told me that it was not possible. Liverpool have a certain transfer philosophy. Age was one issue, the other was price. Both factors were negative for me. So, Hanko said that he was speaking to Arne Slot, but because of his age, which is 26, and because of the price, it's no go for Liverpool's transfer policy. Now look, I have no problem with us having a specific transfer policy, as long as that policy leads to some actual bloody signings. But you know, when we have a transfer policy where we're looking for unicorns and there ain't no unicorns flying around out there, that's when I start to get a bit of a, a hump because you know, this midfield unicorn we've been looking for now for three seasons. Uh, Stevie Boy said, but Craig, what is our transfer policy? Young and cheap seems to be the one, Stevie Boy. Young and cheap, not wanting too much wages, but with the potential to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that's what really pissed me off about Lenny Arrow. You know, I can't ignore that whole saga because we were lied to. You know, I'm going to say it like it is. We were all lied to. How many articles do you guys remember reading that said, if Real Madrid show any willingness to not sign Lenny Arrow, that Liverpool would be ready to pounce. I don't think I'm lying to say I personally read at least 10 pieces in and around that from various journalists that cover Liverpool. Then Real Madrid stepped away. And what did we do? Cried poor mouth and said, we couldn't give that much wages to somebody that young. We couldn't guarantee him a starting place. But two weeks ago, he was a generational talent. And the only problem was that Madrid were in for him. And he wanted Madrid. But he's ended up at Manchester United. That confuses me. Because it seems like narratives shift when they want them to. Bellingham was another one. The only problem with Bellingham, according to Jurgen, was that he wasn't available. He said it, not me. And then he was available. And we didn't do it. We've been mugged off. Over and over again. Over transfers. And again, still people... Defend the indefensible. Lenny Yaro, going on our own club's words, should be a Liverpool player now. But he's a United player. Because Liverpool wouldn't pony up the dough. And that's the truth of it. They wouldn't pay the going rate wages. They described him as a generational talent, but want to give him pauper money. It's all just so contradictory that I find it funny. Do you, do you not get where I'm coming from on it, like? It was all, yeah, let's sign Lenny Arrow. If Real Madrid don't show an interest in him, we'll be there, we'll move, we'll be ready. Until they didn't, and we weren't. <laughs> and then it just went and got brushed under the carpet. Uh, Benjamin said, I've seen Simons, unless Alexis goes, he doesn't play. Nico Williams doesn't play. And to be honest, Super Mendy doesn't get in the first team yet. The only two things I want now are contracts and a defender, said Benjamin. Well, I've got to be honest with you, Benjamin. I, I am steadfast on us needing that midfielder bro it, you know we're one Ryan Grafenberg injury away from a real real headache um, defensively yes I agree with you we do need to keep that in mind mate and we certainly need to look to the future there and that's before I've even started allowing myself to consider the idea of us not re-signing Virgil which I'll be honest with you Benjamin I haven't even considered that yet for me it's just a lot of talk from our club a lot of briefing but not a lot of action with regards to anything so we won't sign players, we won't re-sign players, we won't pay players what they think they're worth. What will we do? You know, what the fuck is Hughes and Edwards at? Because I'd love to, I'd love to be able to blag a living doing nothing or talking all the time. Because no action. Again, we are now 27 days away from these gentlemen being able to Go and talk with other clubs openly without anything of us being able to stop them. And we're still pissing about. To move on to some more stuff today from Arne Slot's press conference. I love this, by the way, from Arne. He said, Arne Slot on Mohamed Salah playing his last game against Manchester City at home. He said, maybe Mo knows more about the 115 charges, so expects them not to be here next season. Then he said very quickly, it was a joke. I repeat, a joke. But Arne Slot is getting in City players' heads. If they're all going around doing the number six now, they're posting about all their trophies and all their achievements. I am so, so enjoying seeing Manchester City so rattled as a club. It is 
priceless to me that they are at every opportunity trying to remind the world that they've won all this stuff. It's great, but it's all fucking tainted, lads. So you, you neglect that part. And I love that Arn is already in their head. They're, they're losing it. And I'm enjoying every second of it. Uh, Arnest also said, It's the culture of this club. It's not special for us to be top. This team, these players, are used to being top of the league and competing for every trophy. It helps that they experienced it and also competed for a long time and fell short. They know it's a long season. Also today, he spoke about how happy he is with the squad, I guess, with a view to the January window. And he said, I'm happy with the squad, but that's not to say this club doesn't take a chance in the market if they know they can do it. It's what Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards are known for. I don't know how to feel about that structure of the way he said that. Take a chance. Because for me, what Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards are known for, or particularly Michael Edwards, is bargains. Spotting that one thing that is undervalued and making a play for it. And that's okay. Because sometimes that works very, very well. But it has to be balanced with some, you know, common sense bona fide signings as well. Uh, also, speaking about potential additions, he said, We're having discussions every day, no matter if there's a window coming up or not. It's a bit of a worry at the moment that three defenders are out. But the good thing is, once the window opens, the defenders are back. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret that. Is he basically saying, yeah, no, we won't be getting any defenders in. Don't worry about it because they'll be back from injury. Like, we won't magically have other injuries in the future. I'm very confused by that. You're getting people back scraped, but there will be more injuries. And we have to be ready for that. Doesn't Slot just speak exceptionally well? I believe he was our first choice. Oh, 100% agree. He speaks so well, Benjamin. Um, and I love everything about the way he conducts himself. The way that he you know, gives honest answers, but also throws a bit of humour in. And like you said, I fully believe 100% he was. Look, everybody would have been looking to see what happens with Alonso. You know, when Alonso done what he did with Leverkusen, every top club in Europe would have been having a look at that situation. Nobody really made that play because he was staying at Leverkusen, but everybody was looking. So it's only natural with his relationship to Liverpool and the history that's there. And the fact that we needed a manager... That his name was going to be in conversations. But ultimately, I truly do believe that the club always had eyes for Arne Slot. And that they made the right decision. I think that's pretty clear. So yeah, I agree with you, Benjamin. Uh, Craig, on transfer news deadline, said Liverpool are ready to make an offer of £80 million to sign Sanchez from Athletic Club. I mean, the source being for Cajes, you can put that on Bullshit Island, Adam. Uh, here's, an, here's a genuine question for you. Have they ever got anything right about Liverpool? And again, I'm not saying this to be a smart arse. I'm being deadly serious. Because I've read out probably 200 Fikahi's rumours over the last few years. And I don't remember one of them coming to fruition. So much so that it's become a running joke. So I wouldn't be paying any attention to it. It does feel like though maybe, maybe this is us saying we have options. You know, you know, if we don't extend the boys, we have options. We are looking at other players. We are preparing just in case. 